Okay, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at uh, both the Blender game engine and Blender Render and how I move uh, things between both and before I do some final animations and this is pretty cool. So I won't go through all the details and everything because this is an intermediate tutorial and for those of you who followed all my videos this should be second nature by now. So this is a cloth object that I have set up here. I can verify that when I run it and you'll see that it just, I'll start it from the beginning right here. You can see it just just waving there a little bit in the wind and I'm in blender render like that okay so I'm just gonna move it out of the way for a second over here and then I'm gonna switch gears and I'm gonna go back into the blender game engine and within blender game I'm gonna run this simulation real quick like we've seen in the other video just press P and there it's gonna go just this little chain swinging alright so we know the cloth is working what I want to do is be able to take this chain and run it into the cloth and make it affect the cloth well this cloth is built within Blender Render, so I'm using those soft body physics. Though you can use, there are soft body physics built into the uh, game engine as well. They're just a little bit trickier to work with. And uh, you can actually see them right in there, soft body, like that. But maybe you've had everything set up in there, so we're going to try and connect things together is the goal. So, so what I want to do is I want to be able to record this animation within the physics engine and it'll generate a bunch of keyframes and I do that by turning this on right here record animation but what I normally what I do is I'll save a file if the normal name of my file was this Taurus physics tube guide well I'll append recorded or something like that to tell me that I've saved it as an animation because it generates so many keyframes that it and then if you try and go back to the original file, if you have lots and lots of objects in your scene, you've generated all these objects, then you have to go and in, delete individual keyframes. I found it's just easier to have a separate file when you're going to actually record it. So let's record a quick animation here. Not very long. We'll just make it swing a little bit there and back. Because those keyframes, they start adding up. You're recording all those things like that. And then we'll go back into Blender Render mode. So if I pick any one of these objects in here now, you can see it's recorded up to about 270 frames. Each one of these all have individual keyframes set now. Like that. They were part of the physics simulation. That top one should not because it's a static object. Okay, so now the goal is how do I take this, which we know is a working cloth object that we saw before, and make it run into there and try and make the chain hit the cloth. Oh, well, there's the goal. All right, so let's press Alt-A, because now since these all have keyframes, Alt-A should make them run. So let's run Alt-A and see what happens. Well, wait a second. So it's hitting the cloth, but nothing's happening. But well, how come the cloth isn't moving? Let's go back to the beginning here, all right? Let's do this, and, and the cloth is not moving. Well, what is that all about? Well, it seems to be that there's some kind of disconnect between the game engine and Blender Render when you actually create, when you do the two, that somehow maybe it disables the cloth somehow. Let's rotate, let's rotate this cloth a little bit more. Let's just, let's run it all the way through from one to the end. Maybe it's going to try and reset itself. Although we're, we're going to have to go into the, let's see if I can go bake this thing. Alright, let's do this. Let's bake the cloth instead. 250 frames. Did do it already, did it? Maybe. Can't imagine. Let's run. Oh, there it is. Alright, so now it's baked and now the cloth is moving. Alright, so that's one thing. That, of course, you notice we didn't have to do it before. I guess I better move this up out of the way into here like this. Now let's try it. Oh, it baked it into the lot. Let's free the bake and rebake it at the new location. All right, let's try that. So that bottom one just barely runs into it, but that's probably enough for what we're trying to do. So I want this chain to be able to affect this cloth. I actually do want it to affect it a little bit more than that. Let's scale this down just a little and move it closer to the scene like this and then we'll rebake it one more time. Alright, so we know the cloth is working. We know the chain is working and maybe we'll just take one of the links of the chain that I know that hits at this one right here and what we'll do is we'll turn that into a soft body object also. 
and we'll make that one uh, all free to go and so there it is like that and then we'll turn that into a soft body and we'll crank these guys up like I usually do I usually crank that up to at least 90 percent and those I usually crank up all the way and they're going to turn this up a little bit here as you've seen in other tutorials and then let's run it as we did we haven't gotten it all there yet let's just see see if that one yeah that one will hit it so we're going to grab it in there we're still not done let's try it one more time see if that's going to work nope because there's still two more things we have to do one is we have to come up here and we have to make that a collision object and then we have to make that one a collision object now theoretically theoretically when we run it Should ba it should go in there and it should collide, right? But however, it's not doing it because we had to bake this. Remember, we baked this thing. So that simulation's already baked. So let's go free the bake on that simulation. All right. And then now let's just run it from the beginning and see if we can actually make it happen. Now it's recalculating it on the fly. But now this is a soft body. And it doesn't, it doesn't like the chain links it's so it doesn't know about the keyframes <laughs> of the existing of the existing one all right you see the problem that you run into <laughs> on this all right well i'm sure there's a workaround actually <laughs> and um yeah i didn't think about that i was just going to try and wing this out and you know do it there but let me see if I do if I get rid of that I'd have to turn all those no those would all have to be oh no could I do would have to turn all those into constraints with rigid body joints but that only works in the game engine okay well there you go so maybe the way to do it really is to do it in the uh, physics engine after all because okay so the reality is I was just thinking of this idea for the moment I thought I'd wing it out and I'd prove it to myself on the fly obviously it didn't work so I'll figure it out and I'll, I'll show it to you in another lesson alright well that's it for now and I'll see you in the next lesson